Hi. It's warmed up a little bit and I'm drinking my coffee, so I'm so grateful for that. Today's talk is going to be about having the newest and the best. <sighs> Haven't we all been curious to go to the store to see what's on the shelves, even just to window shop, even if you don't go inside the shop? There's nothing like those times. You know, when you take a long drive and it's Christmas and you're going street to street for miles and looking at the Christmas lights. There's nothing like taking a long drive and a stroll, you know. But when we get our eyes on something that we see and we know that we can have it, we will take a detour. Even if we're chilling and we're doing okay and we're rocking, we are... We're on the right path, basically, and you have peace, and you have good things that are happening in your life. Getting the newest and the best could make you commit suicide. It could make you lose your soul. It could make you lose yourself. It could make you become a basket case. And... That includes anything, any high degree or celebrity or common position that you want to be promoted to. It is so tempting to get the new and the best because it gives us that opportunity to grow and to see what's in it for you. That's pleasurable. That's exciting. That's okay. Those are the simple delights of this life. Period. And you should keep it at that. We are very adamant and persistent in more, 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 more. Gimme, 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 gimme. And show, 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 show. And in some cases, flash cash. That gives people a poop of sensing their superiority. People want the wealth. People want the dream to come true. Whatever that is. And it's about your heart being lonely and knowing where you take your heart when you become lonely. And when you're lonely and there's a pause for reflection, examining yourself, self-compassion, we may, my nose is dripping one moment, we may become overzealous on getting and having where we will use a high level of envy to get to the top. You don't want to get to the top if you get up there to the top and find out your motivation was envy because you won't be happy. I promise you that. Get to the top so that you could, whatever, show off to yourself and maybe gain respect for yourself. But if you have greed and corruption and lies packed into that, you're not going to be happy. You're going to smile to yourself. You'll be content. 
I'll be happy with a level of I achieved, but you're not going to have the joy that passes all understanding that is really supernatural. When you are, and pardon me, because when I'm talking, I'm so animated and charismatic and I make really weird gestures like this. But when you are putting the pieces together, right, and you are after the best and the new, <clears throat> and there's growth mindsets in that, there's abundance thinking in that, we're not putting it down. We're checking in on ourselves. You'll want to take extra caution in the appreciation compartment. You need to figure out if you really appreciate the people on your journey and on your path that are helping you get what you want. If you are unappreciative of them, you don't stay in touch with them, you don't communicate with them, some may be needy, some may have not what you have or what you're going to achieve and where you're going. Some people will let you go because you're not going where they're going. Even though you're going somewhere nice, they will have nothing to do with you because they're that discriminating or discretionary or stuck up or picky or full of their agenda. There is pain in the person. Whatever measurement you have on conceit and where in the measurement of conceit you can find where appreciation is lacking, which explains the high increase of conceit. It sounds fun. It sounds exciting. It sounds uh, self-preservation minded. But you don't want to be known as a diva, like a real one. Or you don't want to be known as a real queen. I mean, a real one, where your, lot, your lies go deep and you work long and deep. You don't want to be working with that type of dirty hand, or you are a cunt. Okay. Our society is not teaching self-compassion. It teaches you born to shop, born to buy. Gimme, gimme, gimme. More, more, more. Self. Self. Self-rewards. Self-gratification. Instant gratification. Self-centeredness. Have a talk with yourself. And see the relationships that have all lined up and has brought you to your present moment right here, right now. I don't know what you're faced with. I don't know who you are on the other side of this camera. When you have your character defects resolved enough, you can begin effectively starting your humanity project, whatever that might look like. I'm very happy to help you with that. When the heart is lonely, it wants more of something, or it wasn't secured safely in love because of family insanity, or because of a broken society, or because of harm, or just being spiritually illiterate, not having much in the intellect department. Your heart 
is very heavy. That's human. Do not cut into your heart. Don't take a knife to your heart to relieve the pain. But your heart has so much agony that it feels ripped. The heart. The heart feels ripped. And this is in conjunction to your awareness of your limits and of the bounds and where you're headed in the new and best version of yourself. And you're not going to get there effectively in Christ and really make it lest you have love inside yourself for yourself. And I'm not talking about love yourself off the radar. Love yourself. Love yourself first. And I'm just too busy to be nice to people. I'm not talking asshole. You have this physiology that requires your brain functions, your amygdala, to have safety in that. Your brain is made to be wired for the new and for the best. So let things fall into place and have appreciation for people that have come before you in your path that have served you, that have worshipped you, that have gotten you from point A to point B. Maybe not very far, but they didn't judge you. They loved you, or they did help you quite a bit, and they did get you pretty far. But that's not the principle. The principle is intentional, advanced community developmentalism. And that comes out a lot in the work at Social Alchemy Project Access Management. So I'm going to leave you with this last idea. And I'm going to get this out quickly. This is your life. And it's mine too. It's all of ours. So I don't want you to think I'm Mr. Know-it-all. Your world is like a garden. And you're a tree planted in the garden with roots going deeply into the soil, right? Intertwined with other root systems from other vegetation in your garden. <clears throat> and you have branches. You're a big tree. Let's go with the best and the newest strength. You're a big tree and you got it going on. You're in control and you created all of this and you get away with being an asshole and telling people to fuck off. I mean, you are it. Well, you got to do a little bit of work on the self-compassion because when you have self-compassion, you don't treat people like assholes and you know that and there's another tree planted next to you so you're over here and there's another tree and the tree has of course its branches its root system about the same size as you And there's birds sharing both of the limbs on both of the trees. I mean, there's just the egalitarianism, it's equality. You have a nice, harmonious, developmental humanity in your garden. And then a storm arises. You 
can't do anything about it. It's going to get muddy. It's your garden. Age in place. Right here, right now. Right? We're not getting any younger. And we're in a storm. And we're stuck. Like we're stuck, like we're stuck in a convalescent hospital aging. And your branches of your tree blow endlessly and violently at times with the other branches of the other trees. And this is what happens. It creates friction. And you know where we're going with this. This is about your relationships with people. It's going to be like that. so much love to go around in your garden but during heavy winds and storm this is what happens to your branches and another person's branches and it's painful it's loud it's screeching you have all those working parts now, I want you to take that chaos, right? Because you've had wonderful days in your garden. I mean, this is just a storm. It'll pass. And once this storm passes, and you draw in butterflies, you draw in birds, you draw in squirrels that come up your tree, you're getting the newest and biggest and Life's going forward because it's no longer raining or storming. Become aware, awake. Become very alert and mindful of your appreciation for the people around you that are playing out the same life that you're playing out. Life is a stage. Great. Dress up. Be seen. Be willing to be known. Fab. It doesn't matter. If you need the attention, great. Shock rock. Wear your tight Jim Morrison fuck me jeans. Or your I want to suck your cock cherry pink or red cherry lipstick. I mean, I don't care. Do what you need to do. But after the storm, after the chasing the rainbow, after drawing in blur birds, and off, after taking vacations and being the best in everything that that consists of, there is silence in your garden. And there are those moments when a lonely heart arises. That is your time to practice appreciation. That's going to be okay for you. You can do that. You are the newest. You are the best version of you. We all are. With the same journey. The same dream. Love and appreciate your environment of your garden. And just see what arises. What comes up for discovery? And begin to journal. Take notes. I love you. Blessings.